Welcome to a new episode uh, with me, David Green, and with me this week is it's just a person that wears so many hats, um, and I am very, very excited that she is on the show this time. It is the amazing Stacey Lane Wilson. How are you doing? Hey, I'm good, and I may even be amazing at some point during this podcast. I guess we'll have <laughs> to see if I live up to your intro. I'm sure I'm sure you'll live up and beyond it um so <laughs> I mean it's it's actually it's, it's a huge thrill to have you um on here we've, we've been talking a little bit uh before uh for the last couple of weeks to, to kind of arrange something um I mean it was funny because when we started talking I just watched something on Amazon that you were in <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah yeah and I mentioned it to you and you're like yeah that, that kind of that documentary does kind of uh pop up every, every now and then so it's it's amazing that uh, I mean you, you you're so busy and you do so many different things so why don't you for anyone who's listening who may not know who you are um why don't you give us a little kind of introduction of yourself and kind of what it is that you uh what you're all about sure um yes well I am a horror author and filmmaker and a previous podcast host, as I mentioned to you just a while ago. Um, yeah, I used to do Inside Horror and This Week in Horror with Elric Kane and Matt Robb, and we had a lot of guests, just like you do in the genre. Um, so yes, and I've been writing books for quite a long time uh, and making films for, gosh, all, almost, uh, I want to say like 11 years now. And so I always have something new going on and uh, it, it keeps me out of the pool halls, I guess you could say. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> what, in, in, the, in the links uh, below for the description for the, uh, on the YouTube channel and on Spotify, we'll have um, anywhere you can find Stacey, uh, her website, Amazon page, Goodreads, IMDB page as well, because there's, there's a whole host of, um, of things on there. And I say, if you are a fan of horror, particularly genre horror as well um indie horror there's a whole well there's a gold mine of stuff uh, that from what stacy is as a, has worked on in the past um yeah there's so, a lot to dive into for sure definitely yeah definitely um so wh where did your kind of journey with um horror start from because obviously you've been you've been in, involved in it in a in variety of mediums for a, a number of years so was that just something that growing up, it was always around you or is it something that you got into on your own? Well, I definitely, uh, I grew up in the golden age of Stephen King. So my mom would read a lot of Stephen King books. And when I was far too young, I would crack open <laughs> those paperbacks and check them out. But um, also I do remember a distinct kind of maybe turning point when I was really young, uh, up past my bedtime at my dad's house and he was watching the Pit and the Pendulum with Vincent Price. So I got mm -hmm. hooked into that immediately. So I always love those atmospheric kind of gothic horror movies. And um, that's just kind of uh, blossomed into the slasher era of the 80s. You know, I, I was uh, old enough to see uh, Friday the 13th and things like that when they came out. Well, maybe not technically old enough, but <laughs> I did see them on cable and would be up all night with my friends over for a slumber party and we'd all be scared. So that was, you know, kind of the start of it. But then I started writing for some magazines like Fangoria and Le Grand Fantastique and Horror.com, the website. Uh, you know, this is back when web writing was kind of the ghetto <laughs> of, uh, of uh, authordom. But anyway, it's certainly taken over now. But uh, yes, and I wrote for Dread Central and a lot of those websites. So I've been sort of in the both sides of the equation, both as a a uh, film critic, book critic, reporter, and also a creator. So it gives me a lot of definitely interesting and um, nuanced perspectives. Mm. And, and um, it's funny you mentioned uh, Vincent Price, like um, <clears throat> that would probably be my entry into horror as well, which was Hammer Horror. Um, growing up in the kind of, I grew up in the UK, so obviously that was the, the home of like, you know, Peter Cushing, Christopher Lee. Um, and that kind of thing. And obviously P Vincent Price was around that kind of sphere as well. Exactly. Would, would, you, would you have been watched, would you have watched much of the, the Hamahara stuff yourself? You know, I didn't until I became um, a, a genre reporter and really got to familiarize myself with 
British horror and Japanese horror and um, South American horror and Italian horror. So I really learned quite a lot about the different subgenres. And of course, I love them. I mean, those are the gold standard of Gothic horror. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, 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 and but what's, what's great about them as well, like from, from they have like that kind of tongue in cheek kind of thing as well, that like kind of a wink a little bit like the, the, the British, especially the British ones kind of do. Um, but then obviously, you, as you said before, it got into kind of the, the slasher genre that kind of took, took over in the, in the late 70s and early 80s. So mm -hmm. as a horror fan already, when they came, came around, like how, how different was that when, you know, when Halloween came out so, to what had been before? Um, because obviously, if there's, I mean, uh, some of my age, I, I'm a little bit, I, I kind of came to them a bit later in life when they're already on uh, VHS and all yeah that well I mean I was alive when Halloween came out but I was too young to see it so I didn't see it until the 80s probably but um okay. yeah yeah I mean that was definitely a pretty prevalent genre the slasher genre when I was a teenager um and so I didn't really have a rate of comparison to something that I'd been used to before that but um I do enjoy seeing all the different facets of the genre from supernatural to psychological to, um, you know, again, the slasher or the, even the, the torture porn quote unquote era that came about, um, you know, when I was writing a lot of film reviews. So definitely a lot of incarnations and they each have something valuable to offer to the canon. Mm -hmm, definitely definitely and obviously as well um music has been a big part of of your life and a lot and, and your career as well um so that comes to what your current venture which is um rock and roll nightmares which is a, a series of books that have all, all came out pretty much on the same day at the beginning of july you can get them on amazon uh, i'm sure you probably get them on, on your website as well um, oh yeah and uh, so they're themed um obviously rock and roll nightmares and we have uh, along, along comes Scary, which is the 60s edition. Um, do you fear like we do, which is the 70s edition? And then Gory Days, which is the 80s edition. So obviously this seems like it's like a real, uh, you've all of your interests have been pulled together. <laughs> this one project. Yes. Yeah, I feel like, uh, you know, even though I have been a writer for hire many times over my uh, writing career, it's really fun to be able to just write something that you yourself would love to read. And I also curated these anthologies uh, with writing prompts for some of my favorite authors. So I do have about half of the stories in each book, but I have sort of a a backup band or my own personal wrecking crew, if you will, uh, <laughs> writing some of the stories. And they're all tinged with very dark comedy, which is something else that I really love. Yeah, so how did um, so how did this one come about? Because obviously you, you have been, you know, say you've been a um, short story writer, a uh, novel writer as well. Um, you've done kind of like kind of biographical um, things as well. Uh, so how did this one come, come about in terms of what it is that you wanted to do with it. Um, obviously you edited it and curated it um, and wrote for it as well. So how, when did you decide that you were gonna work on rock and roll nightmares and uh, what was kind of like the drive to do it? Was it just a passion project for you or was it something that was just like, you just woke up and had this idea and you were like, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, well, that's usually how I do something. I just think, hey, that'd be <laughs> cool. And then it happens. Um, so yes, my follow through is excellent, which I think comes from my many years in journalism and, um, and non genre being a news writer where I had mm -hmm. to just like write on command seven to 10 news stories a day. So I'm really good at organizing, researching and putting things together. Um, but this actually, you know, the first idea came together, I think when I was making a long drive from California to Las Vegas, which is about a four and a half hour drive. And I just was listening to music as I often do rock music. And I thought of a funny twist, uh, which actually is, I didn't use this name in any of these books, but you know, the song Jamie's Crying by Van Halen. I, I was thinking, oh, Jamie's dying. That would be a great name for a book or a story. And so <laughs> that's kind of how it came about. And then I, I wrote down some fun ideas and then uh, my friends chimed in, some of my clever friends, uh, like for instance, do you fear like we do? is a twist on Peter Frampton's Do You Feel Like We Do, 1970s mm -hmm. big live album hit that a friend of mine, Lottie Ferris Knowles, came up with. So yeah, it's kind of a fun collaboration to just be able to uh, play in the sandbox that we all love. 
yeah, definitely. And that, and that one has, um, I mean, that's what I, I enjoyed. Uh, I've, I mean, I've read the um, the 80s one, but I, I, I'm going to read the other ones as well because I, I really enjoyed it. Like, and anyone that's listening, it's really, really good. Like, check it out. Um, I'll be putting the review up on the channel pretty soon. Um, but I will check out the other ones because like, I'm a big fan of 60s and 70s music. Um, oh, fantastic. M- more than 80s, probably, like 60s and 70s kind of like, as someone who is in the 30s, uh, late 30s, like it's a bit kind of some people are like, why, why are you listening to, do you listen to anything from the last decade? It's like not not so much anymore. <laughs> um, you know, all that auto tune, I guess, is uh, you know, <laughs> not many people like that. But um, yeah. yeah, no, Along Comes Scary is a lot of fun. I think you'll really enjoy this one story in particular. Well, there's, a, you know, of course, all of them are fun, but Marco Manone came up with a supernatural explanation to the famed and notorious 27 club in which, you know, many mm-hmm. rock stars have leapt from the mortal coil at that age of 27. So he has a, a fun story about that that's oh. set in 1968 or nine, I believe so. And it's really period correct. He's a big fan of um, Bukowski. So, you know, you can kind of feel that in his writing and he kind of channels Lester Bangs a little bit, the, the rock journalist from Cream Magazine. There's that kind of, um, jaded world view in the, in the story that's really right. very fun Excellent. i'll definitely check that out because like what's great about it is i mean there's a lot of different um throughout the three volumes there's a lot of different authors involved it's not just the, the same people and uh, some of them are people that i recognize and have worked with like rufan uh, jagger who i know uh, quite well uh, she's going to be on the channel uh, in a few uh, we've got a books in a few months actually uh, v castro who have kind of been around but there's other people that I've kind of not read before that I'm really excited to read the work about. So how did you go about kind of, um, you said before you had like a, a wrecking crew in, in mind, was it was it people that you'd worked with before or people that's like work you've come across and thought, you know what, I, I would love to do something with them. The yeah, future. I mean, a combination of both for sure. Um, Darren Gordon Smith, who is, he has two short stories um, in the books in which we both wrote together. I mean, we're kind of like, um, it's almost like a relay race, how we write, like he'll write one short chapter and then he'll hand it off to me and I'll write the next chapter and then I'll leave a cliffhanger for him and he writes the next one. So we've done that a few times and it's a really fun writing exercise that actually comes together in such a way that it's hopefully enjoyable for everyone to read. Um, so we have two stories there and um, I met him several years ago when I was on the set of his film uh, as a reporter. Uh, It's called Repo the Genetic Opera, which some of your Mm -hmm. listeners may be familiar with. And it's kind of a a rock and roll comedy horror film, which is kind of what these books are. I would say they're rock and roll horror comedies. Mm -hmm. And so I collaborated with him yet again. We've done a couple of uh, books together and we also made a movie together that's coming out. It's a feature film called The Second Age of Aquarius that should be out later this year, early next year. And then the other authors are either people I've worked with before or that whose work I admire, you know, like uh, Jeff Strand, who I think is just one of the, the funniest and most gruesome horror writers out there right now. And he's got a story in the 60s edition. And then, yeah, like I said, just other people who I've liked. Um, Violet Castro, she's an up and comer that a lot of people love. And I really enjoyed her story too, that she put in the 80s edition. Mm-hmm. And, you know, just people that I have actually met on the, on, on Facebook, really, you know, that I've kind of come to know. Ruth Ann Jaggi is one. Um, and she works for me off and on as a book reviewer. I have a website called womeninhorror.com. So she wrote reviews and then I asked her if she could contribute something to the 70s edition. And she did. She came up with um, Tiny Danger, which is kind of a riff on Tiny Dancer. <laughs> a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah she's 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 a uh, she's great um and yeah it, uh, there will be people that listen to this that are fans of, of repo um i know there will be and because i know there's, a, there's a, i have a quite a lot of people that listen that are big buffy fans and obviously anthony head is is in repo as well so like you know they, they kind of go around looking for anything that people from buffy that are in so um there's gonna yeah. be a lot of, yeah there's gonna be uh yeah i'm sure there's gonna be lots of people yeah i've seen that and it's great and i i love it as well um so obviously being someone that's um so kind of um you know you know so much about about horror like you know uh, the, the history of it the kind of the inner workings of it the craft of it what do you think is the next stage of horror because obviously we, there's always kind of 
phases and uh, new kind of um, like how you mentioned before torture porn and there was like the kind of found footage and then there was the um, you know all these different kind of styles of, of horror coming through what do you think is going to be the next kind of big craze or do you think it's going to go back to basics a little bit because obviously that that has also came in the last few years where you get a lot of people that grew up watching slasher films in the 70s and 80s that are now making films and they're like you know I want to make films or write stories like the ones that I enjoyed when I was growing up yeah absolutely like, like Fear Street which is the new film trilogy on uh, Netflix definitely has that slasher screen throwback vibe to it. Mm -hmm. um, so that's definitely one that I think is never going to go out of style. Another is certainly the uh, the feelings of paranoia and isolation and aloneness thanks to the pandemic. Uh, mm -hmm. So I think that's going to definitely color a lot of our horror films and books in the future. Right, yeah, definitely. Because I mean, that's a great point. Because even if you if you read um, a lot of anthologies that have come out in the last year, there are many. That's a big theme in so many. Not even just the not even just the individual stories, but there's a lot of anthologies that are pandem pandemic based or isolation based. And yeah, that that's um, we've probably not hit that wave of filmmaking yet. That's probably going to be the next couple of years. But yeah, that's the that's a that's a great point. And. You know what? I, I'm not sure if I'm I'm going to be there for it to be honest with you because I'll be like, I know, I right? Want, I'm I, tired I of it. Yeah, once <laughs> yeah. we live through it, we don't really want to see other people uh, acting it out. But I don't know. We'll see. I think that could definitely be a thing. And even before the pandemic, there were a lot of you know webcam horror movies. So definitely yeah. something that's probably around to stay for a while. Um, you know, I like the supernatural fantasy ideas. Um, M. Night Shyamalan's Old is coming out mm -hmm. here um, tomorrow. Um, so, yeah, I mean, movies like that that kind of have a political undercurrent or make you think about your life and take stock of it. Um, yeah. So I don't really see, yeah, the, that changing. Did you did you catch Old? Yeah, because it's been getting quite a decent buzz. Um, and obviously it's, it's probably... The first, I mean, it, he he has such a good fan base as well, doesn't he? And some people love to hate him as well. So everyone's kind of interested when he has a new film coming out. I know. Yeah. I mean, regardless of whether you like him or not, or if you, you're a fan, uh, he's definitely got a unique point of view and always puts out something that people want to see. I, I enjoyed the first season quite a bit of Servant, which was on Apple TV here. It was quite an intriguing and uh, thought provoking premise. Pretty creepy. Um, yeah, I did see old. I didn't really care for it. I thought the the dialogue was really, really clunky, but we'll have to see what other people, I, I have noticed it's getting mixed reviews, just like most of his films. He's quite polarizing. I love the premise though. I mean, what a fantastic idea. And then the reveal, you know, which I certainly will not give away, I thought was pretty clever. Yeah, pretty yeah, clever. No no spoilers well I'll, I'll maybe maybe spoilers at another point um but yeah so what is um what is next for you because obviously we, when we, we touched upon at the start that you and, and throughout the the um the, the show work we've talked about how many different things that you like to be involved in that you have in production uh what is what is next for you for the rest of um 2021 and and the future uh well I I'm going to continue with the Rock and Roll Nightmares book series. I have three other volumes planned, one of which is an illustrated version um, with different stories in it. And then I also have a nonfiction version planned about real rock and roll nightmares, all the suicides, murders, uh, ODs, and general catastrophes that have <laughs> surrounded some rock groups throughout history. Uh, and then also a, a movie version of Rock and Roll Nightmares uh, with oh, putting the spotlight on movies that have a rock and roll theme to them that are also horror. Excellent. That sounds really interesting. And, that, and you, are you going to be kind of doing the same with the volumes that are books? Are you going to kind of do like a, a, a quick release again or are you going to be more kind of a staggered thing um, in the future? Maybe more staggered. This was kind of like our our big uh, handful of confetti being thrown out to, <laughs> to the party. It's begun, but yeah, I'm, I need to take a little time because as I mentioned, I'm also um, in post-production on a feature film that I did with Darren Gordon-Smith. And so that is very time consuming putting out a film, even though it's been shot now, it's just uh, finished post-production. So we're looking for a home for that to get that out into the world. And it's not horror, but it is a rock and roll sci-fi comedy 
and Darren sure. wrote um, some fantastic period correct 60s rock tunes for it and we're going to put out um, an accompanying soundtrack and a book to go with it so yeah there's a lot going on a lot that's that is a lot <laughs> when you say <laughs> a lot a lot going on that's I mean that's a bit of the understatement of the year. <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, well I wish you the, the best of luck and hopefully um you know in a few months time um you'll come on again you can tell you can give us a, an update of what you've been what has happened since and uh, I'd love to that's great and, and uh, anyway people that are listening yeah th that was a great um kind of uh, kind of example of the, the Fear Street anthology that's on Netflix if you're a fan of those and if you're a fan of like you know uh, music and a bit of comedy as well these books are definitely something that you want to check out um it's it, they're the say that the the 80s one was fantastic I was uh cringing and howling with laughter at the same time and I can't wait to check <laughs> out the 70s and 60s one so again all the description will uh, all in the description below you can find everything that we've talked about today um, and Stacey, thank you so much for coming on and giving us a little bit of your time. Thank you.